Welcome low ego action heroes. I'm Debbie Levitt from Delta CX. We are a full service CX and UX consultancy. And this is my Axure 10 core skills course. I've been using Axure since February, 2011, and I've been teaching it for many, many years. And in fact, I've been one of Axure's recommended trainers since 2014. This course is designed to take you from super Axure newbie or Axure afraid all the way through to confident intermediate. So if you've landed on this one video, there are many, many others. Please check our Axure lessons playlist for a lot more videos about using Axure. The Delta CX YouTube channel has over 500 videos on it as of when I'm recording this in December 2021, and I hope you'll subscribe and join in some of our live streams. I'm live usually three or four times a week with teaching UX research and design, talking about CX, helping people get into the profession, helping leaders and managers, and of course, don't forget, Tuesday office hours, ask me anything. So subscribe and hang out here. So thanks for being here. Please subscribe and let's jump into that next actual lesson. Let's talk about page styles and widget styles in this lesson. Axure's got both. They're both really important. And let's learn more. So if we click on any blank part of our screen or canvas, you'll see over here in the top right, page interactions. That tells me I'm dealing with this page at the page level. If I weren't, I might have selected a widget and you won't see anything about the page. So let's make sure we're looking at the page. Now we can take a look here in the uh, toolbar at page dimensions, page style. This also exists in the style toolbar. So again, whether you want to, I'm sorry, the style pane, whether you want to get it from the style pane or handle it from from this toolbar up here, your choice. But what we're going to look at are these styles. And the styles are pretty simple. So let's pop them out, which is this manage page styles, and let's take a look. Page styles let us say that by default, our page aligns left or aligns center. Why they don't have a line right for languages that are right to left, I don't know, but they don't. Most web pages are centered, so that's going to be your default. And most web pages have a white background, so that's going to be your default. But if you needed a different color, you could create it. This would be if you wanted to have an image as your page background. Some people still do that. I generally don't, but you can. And then of course, this would be where it is, um, your, your background image is aligned and whether or not it repeats or tiles or stretches in the background. I'll talk about low fidelity in a minute, but let's just make a secondary page style just to play with it a little bit. So let's say this will be style two and I can say the page is left aligned. Let's just pick some very different things so we can see what's going on. It's a yellow background or 72% uh, see-through yellow background. Um, we won't deal with low fidelity yet and we'll say, okay. Now we've created a style, but we haven't applied the style. And that happens over here in this drop list. So right now we have the default style, which was centered and white. And we can see that if we go to do a preview. So this was our uh, earlier page. Let's go back to the page we're on now, which is this one with our crazy shape. You can see that this is definitely centered. If we come back to Axure and we pull down the drop down menu and say style two, now we see the yellow background, but it's not totally obvious oops, that this is uh, left justified, oops, which we can do. And once we refresh, we can now see that this is uh, yellow and left justified. These things aren't totally at the edge because they're not totally at the edge here. If we had something exactly at the edge here, it would then show up over here. There you go. And notice I don't have to do a fresh preview every time. I can just refresh my preview and I don't have to keep opening new tabs. I tend to only do a fresh preview if something seems to be going wrong or if I've created a new page and the prototype doesn't have that page listed here even after I refresh, which typically happens. 
So those are our page styles. And again, we can control them by clicking away from widgets into the canvas and using this drop list for which style would you like to apply. Now let's talk about the visual fidelity. Now we can manually change this here or we can make it part of the widget style. So let's say for example, our style two is going to be low fidelity. Um, what Axure does there, and we don't see it yet because we didn't apply it. What Axure does there is it typically makes your project grayscale, but it changes something as well that's not as obvious to us because we didn't have any text on this page. It changes your font to a font called, no, not Comic Sans, it's actually Axure handwriting. It comes with the software. So that means that if we were to say, give me back my default style, then this would be whatever is your default font, which often in our uh, Axure is Arial. If we change it, and I can do it manually here, to the low fidelity, it becomes Axure handwriting. So that is for people who want to have a quick one-click way to make something look lower fidelity in case you're having some trouble explaining to people this is not the final design. Um, now that's not how I do it. I try to communicate that rather than um, kill some of my color or fidelity. And another problem is that if you are using any font-based icon sets, like the font version of Font Awesome, or as I like to joke, Zap Dingbats, then when you do this, you're going to find that Axure has replaced those with this text, and then you're going to lose those icons. So while it's got an interesting um, feature in theory, it's not something that really works for me, but you can certainly do it. Another thing I want to mention that you can find in the page style area says page dimensions. Now, as you can see here in the actual canvas or workspace, the ruler just seems to go and go and go and go. Here's 12,800 pixels wide. You are unlikely to be trying to design for that. Also note, I can jump back to zero, zero over here or pressing control nine uh, for Windows anyway. You can also select a page dimension if you want Axure to give you more of an artboard type of experience. So for example, if you know that you are designing for smaller laptops and you're gonna go with 1200, you can say your page is 1200 and Axure will show you that it cuts off there. But just note that even if you don't do that, you can still have a uh, we could, I mean, we could remove this, we could undo this, but the idea would be that even without that, if we made sure that everything on our page fit within 1200, which we might have if we we're using a grid system, Axure will still show a page that is 1200 wide. The only downside is that if you were to accidentally or on purpose make something that was wider than 1200, then you would find that Axure widened your page to accommodate for that other element. Here, if I say something is 1200 wide and I drag something outside of the artboard space and we do a preview, you see it anyway. So just a reminder to everybody that even though Axure is giving you this kind of artboard look and these choices for page widths, it's really just a suggestion to you. If you have elements that you are trying to move off of the canvas or artboard or page, just note that Axure will still show them. Uh, they are not, you know, kind of off the artboard in that sense because even there in my preview, there was that circle. So I do recommend uh, that people, whether or not you're using these page boundaries, if you have something that you need to permanently take off of a page, rather than moving it off of the canvas or the artboard, I like to create a page called unused ideas and drop everything there because Axure is not treating this as uh, a fixed with thing where things outside of it won't show up. Clearly you can see these things do show up. However, for people who like to see a very strict looking boundary, certainly one stricter than our guides might show. We can show those again, global guides. 
then any guides might show, then certainly you can go that route. I personally do not build with my pages that way. So that's really a, an actual user interface choice for you. But I at least wanted you to know that if you did choose different sizes of pages, that Axure will show you these boundaries, but unfortunately doesn't totally keep to these boundaries themselves. So for example, let's pick another one, Galaxy S9. Here's my circle, save, refresh. Aha! Well, now I don't see the circle. Well, what about different page sizes? As you can tell, I don't use this. But I think it's very interesting that this whole thing seems very confused. I wonder if this is a bug. Okay, so it's not showing the page when I say it's an iPad. What about when I say it's just a regular website? Nope, that thing's still here. All right, well, thanks for having a little moment of experimentation with me on a feature I don't really use. And you can see that even Actura is using it at least inconsistently as of when I'm recording this. Uh, you can always check to see if this has changed. But in general, I do not use this. I don't bother uh, with that. I just usually drag out a guide or I know I'm building to a certain point and I don't use the page dimensions. As for the adaptive views, we have a separate lesson on that. Now let's take a look at our widget styles. So these were global page styles at that global page level where any page that were assigned the default or style to uh, page style, if we changed it, it would globally change. The same is true for widget styling. So let's say, for example, we drag out a button. Standard action button. Nothing wrong with it. It's blue. It's got a border. It's got some rounded corners. We can see all that from our style pane as well as some of our style toolbar. But let's say that's not really the way that buttons work in our world. So we will want to change this globally. Now, where do we do that? When you click on any widget, you will see over here in the style pane, widget style. And you'll also see in the style toolbar, it doesn't say widget style, it does on mouse over, but you've got widget style and that same weird pop out icon for manage widget styles. Let's go to manage widget styles. And by the way, these are also available. Let me cancel quickly out of this. These are also available from project widget style manager, page style manager. So jumping back into the widget style manager, every time we use in a file, one of Axure's standard widgets, we're going to get a default style for it. So for example, by default, our primary button was this blue with white font, with no border, with five pixel rounded corners, etc. If we wanted to change the way the primary button looked every time we drag it out, we would do that here. And that would override, as it says here, you will override your style. And we might say, yeah, by default, our buttons are plum. And again, I'm just doing that for comedy. I'm not suggesting that's a good color. And of course, this button is now plum. Now, even though this one still looks blue because that's the way it was saved in the library, we've overwritten that with our custom styling. Now, all buttons will look like that. Now, if you're thinking, I don't know, Deb, I don't want to change the global one. That might get weird or confusing. Then remember, you can always go back into the widget style manager. You can leave your primary button the way it was. So let's give it some sort of shade of blue there. It looks like actual blue. And we can always say, duplicate this if we like a lot of what's going on there, but want to make it our own, or we can add a new style. So I can say duplicate style. And let's say, I call it pry button, just to tell the difference between Axure's primary button and my custom one. So let's say mine is plum. And let's say my font is a little bit bigger. I think people are using much bigger fonts nowadays, but we'll address that in a moment. Maybe the text on it is bold. Um, maybe it doesn't have a border. And uh, let's say it's got really rounded corners just for fun. Alrighty. So 
I can say, okay, now remember, we've created a style, but we didn't apply the style. So I can pick one of these buttons and I could say, okay, your primary button now, but I want you to be pry button. So that way we can create as many styles as we like, and we just have to select the items or elements or widgets that we want and apply the style. So again, let's do that again with this one. We can select multiple things or one at a time. Whoop. And I can do that over here from the style pane and I can say pry button. So whether you do it from the style pane or the style toolbar, up to you for what you feel is faster and easier. I tend to leave my panes on interactions because I'm writing so many interactions. So I tend to use that from the style toolbar up here in the top left. Now we can create as many of these as we like. We can have lots of different buttons. Maybe we duplicate this and we make a secondary button. And maybe our secondary button has that kind of reversed look. It's a, oh, that's not white enough. Let's go into super white. It is a white button with plum font. Keep it bold, let's see how we like it. With a border, let's try two pixels for fun. What color is that border? Again, you would think it says border color, but it doesn't, it says line color, but same thing. You might think of it as stroke or outline. And okay, we created a style, but we didn't apply the style. So I might say the button I have selected on the canvas right now is sec button. And now we have a fairly standard looking primary button and secondary button. Now, if you've copied and pasted or applied these styles all over your document and you have a zillion buttons and somebody says, hey, um, we've decided we don't like the plum. We want to go back to blue. Now, normally you think, oh my God, I have to go through the entire document and I have to find everywhere I made these buttons and change the color. But you don't. You just have to find your way into the widget style manager. You have to find your way to your pry button or whatever you named that style and make the changes that everybody has decided on. So let's say we're going to go with this kind of muted navy. You can see it's already changing on my screen. Maybe somebody said we don't want bold text so we can uncheck bold. So any changes you want to make are in the global widget styles. Now, Axure doesn't always make a tutorial on this and so a lot of people don't know about it. This leads people to do a lot of manual formatting here and in the style pane. It leads them to want the format painter, which uh, was in Axure. Um, uh, nine, but I don't think I see it in Axure 10, you tell me. But basically the idea is we no longer have to copy and paste styles from one thing to another because we can create global styles and just assign the style. That is absolutely the easiest way. Um, let's see if I hit undo, if I get my purple buttons back. Undo, undo, no, too many undos. Um, okay, so let's talk more about global widget styling and the importance of that global control. Now, let's say, for example, you took a look at this button, you said, nah, 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 I like this text bold. And, you know, just to make this page interesting, I think I want a different color button. I want hot pink. Um, now, okay, you might think, okay, let's take a look at this button. It says pry button, but it's got a star next to it. It's like it's trying to tell us something. And then we have this button down here and this says pry button with no star. So what do you think the star means? The star means you had a global style, but you did some manual formatting and now you might've overwritten your stuff. So I'll show you what that turns into. Let's again, imagine our pry button and we go into our styles and we say, yeah, you know what? Everybody said, go back to plum. Or let's just pick some super outlandish color. Let's pick Kermit the Frog green. Okay, so notice this one changed because it was the style was applied to it. This one did not change because even though the style was applied to it, we overwrote the style when we changed the color manually. And that's what that star is trying to tell us. Hey, uh... Mm, you overwrote it. Now, if you really wanted the style to look like this, 
That's where this funky arrow comes in, which is update or create the style. So you might say, I want to update the style so that the pry button now matches this. And notice it did when I clicked that. So that would be one way where if you start building something manually, you could go, oh man, I really should have made a global style here. I want to create a style. Let's do that as an example. Let's say I've got a button. And let's say I've been happily manually styling it. It's mint green and it's got some sort of wacky font courier. Why not? I do. I make them ugly for the comedy and bold. And then you're thinking, uh oh, that was a manual style. I think I want to be able to use that as a global style. So we can go over here, or again, the same button is up in the toolbar. So either one and say, create new style. And now Axure says, cool, I am making you a new style. And it's got all of the things that you just said, green, career, bold, 18, all this other stuff. So we can say, you know, button version two. I'm just making stuff up here, but you can see where this is going. And that way you can say, this is button version two, and you want to make sure that that widget style is now applied to this one you made. In old versions of Axure, it wasn't necessarily applied and you still had to apply it. Jumping onto an isolated page, just to make a quick point for a moment, we just talked about what to do if you have manually styled a button and you want to update your global widget style to match that, but what if you manually styled a widget and you made a mess of everything and you wish you could undo it? So here I've got pry button and let's say that I have gone wild with manual styling, maybe some of it in the toolbar, maybe some of it over here. Let's see, I've made uh, wildly round corners and I have a ridiculous border color on it. Fuchsia! And, and, oh, I, but that won't help if it's got border equals zero. So we just need a giant border for our fuchsia button. That looks awesome. Okay. So when we click on this button, we do get the hint that we had a global style, but the star says you've changed it. Now, if we don't want to click this button and update the style, what do we do if we want to undo the style? Now, some people would say, let's just choose the style again. And that seems to work though. I notice Axure still gives us a star, like something here is not quite right. So the technique that I teach people just to make double dog sure that you are not carrying over any of your manual styling is to first choose default. Default should clear out all of the manual styling you've done. It will look as plain as plain can be or whatever matches your default style. And then we can come in here and look for pry button and reassign it. So again, my suggestion there is don't just reassign your widget to your style. First, clear everything out by doing default and then reassign the style. So um, remember that the global widget styling is a great way to go. Now you might be thinking, well, what's the difference between globally styling this button and making it a master? So imagine if we have this button, then I could say, oh, you know what? I've got more words this time. I'm going to need to make this button wider. So this instance of this button could be wider or different in some way. If we had this as a master now called component, let me copy paste it in and I'll show you what's cooking there. So I could say, I want to make a new component and I want to uh, call it green button. And I'm going to paste it in here and drop it at zero, zero. So I've pasted it here and I've dropped it at zero, zero. Now let's go back to our page and we can drag it out and use it. And what you'll see here is that there is a mask on it. That's why the color is slightly different. There's that pink mask on it. But if I want to make this a different size, I, I kind of can't because Axure assumes that masters, now called components, are pretty much always the same thing. Looking the same, working the same. That's what I was talking about before.
So uh, be careful of whether or not you want this thing to be a master. Now, that being said, if your button is always going to be a certain size and later on you change your mind about that size, you would have to go to every instance of the button and manually change it. If it were a master, then hypothetically, you change the size here. And now that shows up everywhere you've put it. So again, these are two totally different things with totally different reasons and needs. I would say for my uses, especially since I'm typically working in medium fidelity and I'm not usually responsible for full fidelity or high fidelity or comps, um, I am usually not too hung up on the exact precise button size. And so I will not make it a component or master. But again, that is up to you as to whether you uh, you want to do it one way or the other. But remember, while you're in beginner land, you're going to say, okay, I want this button to work this way on this page. Hey, this master always does the same thing. What am I going to do? You can drop hotspots on it, or you can wait for the advanced class to tell you how to make it do different things in different instances. So that's a little bit about global styling. I recommend highly, highly, highly using it everywhere you can. Um, it'll also be inherited in libraries you make and components you build for your libraries. So to me, global styling is the way to go. And unless I'm trying to work really fast or really dirty, I don't do the manual styling from the toolbar or from the pane. See you in the next video.